All right, now, remember we also said that no matter where this is, no matter where your point is, if I put the point over here, or, or down here, or something like that, okay, according to this definition, every point is the same distance from the origin. Do, do you agree? Right? So uh, this distance here, and, and this one here, and that one there, all the same. Okay? Now just for the sake of illustration, I'm just going to say, let's make the radius of the circle, I don't know, a nice easy number like say 3. Okay? Now I know that the distance from the origin, the center, to this point on the circumference, wherever it happens to be, I know that that distance is 3 because it should be 3 everywhere. That's what this means. Okay? All right. Pick up your pen. Don't draw this diagram yet if you haven't already. I want you to draw what I'm about to put on the left hand side. Okay? We know what the distance between two points is. All the way back in coordinate geometry, we spent quite a lot of time using a formula for the distance between two points. I'll give you a clue. It has a big square root sign in it. Does anyone remember it? Okay. Now, it's been a little while since we've seen this, so maybe you don't remember. I hope it jogged your memory when you see it. But here's the really cool bit. Right color. I can use that to help me understand this. Watch carefully. Okay? On this circle, uh, I know that all of these distances here, they're all equal to 3. Right? They're all equal to 3. So I'm going to say, instead of distance, I'm going to say 3. Right? Because I know that distance is always going to be equal to that number. Now that's equal to, now what's going to go on our right hand side? Well, uh, x1, y1, that's just a pair of coordinates, right? Some point. And x2, y2, they're just the coordinates of some other point. Does that make sense? But look, I've got, I've got two points here. I've got two points here. So my coordinates are going to look something like this. Let's make, let's make this one the first point and this one the second point. Okay? So x1 minus x2 is going to be x minus 0, right? x minus 0, and that has been squared. Okay? Then when I go over to this part of the equation, I'm looking at the y values. Well, this y value is just called y. And this y value is 0. So this part will be y minus 0 squared. Okay? Hmm. I could simplify this a lot. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, I, I actually don't like this square root sign. It's a pain to draw every time it's huge. So I'm going to square both sides. Is that OK? I'm going to square both sides. I'm going to say 9 over here. And over on the right hand side, in a minute, I don't have to write the square root sign anymore because I squared it. Okay? x minus 0. That's just equal to x. So that guy is x squared. y minus 0 is just y. So this part is y squared. Now, this thing here, do you see what we've done? We've turned all these words, which are kind of nice, and we sort of know what they mean, but we've turned them into this equation that we've had for every other kind of graph. But it's a weird equation, right? It's different to everything you've ever seen before. All four of the graphs I showed you earlier are y equals this, y equals that, etc. Y is the subject. This guy is different and weird, but cool. Do you have a question, Ryan? How did you get the 3 to the 9? Great question. From this line to this line, I did two things, which admittedly I try to avoid doing, but they're fairly simple and I can try to explain them. Um, over here, what happened to all the brackets? Why have they all disappeared? Because x minus 0 is just x, and y minus 0 is just y. So you know what's happening over there. But then I didn't want to write the square root sign either, because it's just, it's just a pain. Okay? So what I did to both sides was I squared both sides. That turned 3 into 9. Uh, on the right hand side, that turned the square root into not a square root anymore. Okay? So this guy, this guy is the equation of a circle. 
But it's not just any circle, it's, it's this circle. It has the center at the origin, zero, zero. And it has a radius of three. Okay. So therefore, if we played out this experiment again, and I said, I want a bigger circle. I don't want a radius of three. I'd like a radius of, say, seven. A lot of this would play out the same, wouldn't it? The origin would still be the center. So everything on the right-hand side would look the same. The left-hand side would be a teeny bit different. It wouldn't be nine. It would be 49 because there'd be a 7 here because that's what you want the radius to be and then you square it so you get 49 instead of 7. Okay? Um, if you wanted the radius to be 10 then this final number will be 100. If you wanted the radius to be whatever this is whatever squared. Okay? So underneath here you can say, I'm going to switch sides, um, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, this is the equation of any circle centered at the origin. Okay? So you can see this x squared plus y squared stuff, it comes from this distance formula. It comes from Pythagoras, actually. Uh, and the r squared, what well, happened because I didn't want to write the big square root everywhere because that was a bit of a pain. 